Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Hello. To watch this sport in high quality, click the link in the description below. Enjoys your time. Average team that gave up a kick return on the opening kickoff last week against Arizona and Lockett just before taking the field got some sort of big pep talk. We saw it with Pete Carroll and the rookie has now returned a punt and a kick for touchdowns in just the third game of the season. Special teams, the number one priority coming to this game, do not give Lockett a chance. And the extra point by Hauschka is good. Well done by John Ryan on the hold. And really, there was nobody to beat. He just outran him. He's not touched. Look how he catches the football at full speed. That's how they teach you. Get momentum. If the ball was kicked low, which it was, they want you to bring it out of the end zone. If it's kicked high, then stay in. The blocking was good, but the Bears got out of their lane and made it easy. Hey, this kid had a couple of return touchdowns in the preseason. I saw him. I Here he is, before. 103 yards against the Broncos, August the 14th. And you saw this one against San Diego, August the 29th, a punt return. And here it is, week one against St. Louis, his first ever return, punt return. Pete Carroll saying this kid, he's uh, a competitor, he's poised. Just a fantastic player. We want to get him the ball. Well, he likes his energy, his talent. It's unique. They love that here in Seattle. 105, longest in team history. And also, they know he's tough. He played those years at Kansas State with Bill Snyder. You know, Bill Snyder's not like a walk in the park. You know? Oh, he's so a great coach. He's a tough coach who really teaches his guys. And when his guys come in the NFL, they're ready to, to adapt and play well. Well, he had a couple of hundred catches, a couple of hundred at Kansas State was drafted in the third round. Well, what a way to break your spirit. You put up such a good first half, only giving up a couple of field goals, and then you kick it 12 seconds into the third quarter. They break it for the touchdown. Let's go down to Tracy. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. When the Seahawks finally take the field on offense, they will not have running back Marshawn Lynch. It is not his calf. It is not his back. It is his right hamstring, and I was just told he is out for the game. Wow. Thank you, Tracy. He had again been battling the calf coming in. You know, Jim, running backs, any player in the league, it's if it's the toe, it turns into the calf, to the hamstring on, and it's... Probably would have been best to sit him out this game and rest him, but they thought he was ready. Play action fake to Forte. It crossed him down the field for the first time, throwing the pass at that length. And he's got his target. It's complete to Zach Miller for 21. Good play action fake. Good timing. They've been running the football so many times on first down, and Jimmy Clausen had all day to throw it, and a beautiful throw on target. Longest play of the game for Chicago. I think that's the first pass they've actually thrown close to 10 yards down the field. Of course, that was farther. Forte, he rushed it for 64 yards in that first half. 
Picks up two on his first carry of the second half. The first half stats, Seattle led 6-0 at the intermission, even 0 for 6 on third down. But the Seahawks score on the last play of the first half and the first play of the second half. Second and eight. As Carson is in trouble and throws it out of bounds and over the outstretched reach of Bruce Irvin. Well, the pass protection was good. He had time. He wants to throw the football to Matt Forte out in the flat or down the field. Nothing's there. Bruce Irvin, pass rusher, speedy, all over. Third and eight. Here they come, and they've got to him this time. The sack by Wagner. Oh, they got the formula now. They feel it. Every time they blitz what they have done, here comes Bobby Wagner to the outside. They've gotten to the quarterback or made him throw it away, Jim. So when that happens, next time you get the football, expect it again. And guess who's back to return the punt? Tyler Lockett. And guess who should kick this football near or out of bounds? Yeah. Pat O'Donnell. You got it. See, you could coach. Yeah. yeah. Good study. You are. But it's uh, in the middle of the field and a fair catch. Probably for a moment. You ready for this? Fox and Carroll went against each other in Super Bowl 48. Right. And the second half kickoff was returned for a touchdown by Percy Harvin against Coach Fox's team on that occasion. Well, I like working with you. You know everything. Let's take a look at Next Gen Stats presented by Esurance. Give you a little uh, analytics on oh, Tyler Lockett. Yeah, here he busting goes. Busting at 105 yards. Maximum speed, got up to 21. Pretty good stuff. Here's Wilson. On first down, connecting with Ricardo Lockett for a gain of about 19. Excellent play action fake. Russell Wilson, big hands, can extend the football and sell it. And even if he doesn't sell you, he's got the speed and the, the motion to get around you and I, I listen, Pete Carroll's been to two Super Bowls back to back, but this offensive line is not the same one he's had the last two years. They've got to let Russell Wilson do more with the football in his hands. He's cautious, he's safe, a little bit like Aaron Rodgers in that respect. He's going to do you right. He's in trouble here, and he's dragged down. And that's McPhee, who is going to get the sack. Well, and a loss of 11. Yeah, Jim, it comes to this side, but you've got a tight end. Jimmy Graham blocking a big, solid pass rusher. When you do that with your tight end, it's going to be tough. And Pernell McPhee, heard that name quite a few times today. Another good play by him. That's the third sack for the afternoon by Chicago. Seattle, you see today, they had that big uh, little... Deception move, the punt return by Richard Sherman set up a field goal, then the kick return. They have six first downs and 13 points. As Wilson gets hit from behind, and again, it's McPhee. Sacks on back-to-back -back plays. Beautiful job by McPhee. He kept working, but the coverage down the field was good. So the pass rushers got a second chance. Oh, my gosh. And Gilliam just completely misses Let's watch down the field. Russell Wilson wants to throw it. Nothing is open. Man, really good coverage. Can't even throw it short. And when he tries to make that second move, lots of people there to make the play. Brings up third and 25. Pass is caught by Curse. 
And he shoved out of bounds at the 35. He had Jared Allen applying some pressure on that throw. Well, you know, listen, this is this is some recurrent theme. 69 pushes, gets inside, and also McPhee back there again. He was going for the hat trick. But, you know, 13 to nothing, and you and I talked last night. One of the stories we wanted to follow, this Seattle offensive line. It's been the cornerstone of this football team from right now. Big pressure up the middle, but able to get away with it. Ryan. And it bounces out of bounds near the 30. Acho almost got there. Come flying through. Okay, the Bears. Second possession of the second half. A total of 123 yards of offense to this point. Clawson six out of 11 for 43 yards. Forte stuffed, maybe a yard. No, we'll give him no gain. Holding number 62 offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Called on Vladimir Dukas. Meanwhile tonight, Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump have something in common. You think I just did the natural segue off of I, that? I, 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 it's it's I, unbelievable. I don't call for these. That was Lamps. They'll each answer some tough questions tonight on the season premiere of 60 Minutes, only CBS. Well, they have not overcome any adversity. The Chicago Bears offense, a 10-yard penalty, very difficult the way the game has gone to think that even in three downs, they could get 20 yards. And another flag out. Might be a delay game. game. Yep. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, watch, watch what they're doing, Jim. Matt Slauson, the left guard, is touching the center, Will Montgomery. And the process is I've been watching it all day. It's a little too slow, and they're just beating the clock so many times. You can see Jimmy Clawson. He's back there clapping his hands about eight times. Like, hurry up, give me the football. That's the third pre-snap penalty on the Chicago offense. And here they're battling again. That's knocked down. April got a hand on it. Well, we've had some blitzes. Look at it, and they have not reacted well to Chicago Bears offense. You make Jimmy Clausen move. Pass protection breaks down. A little great inside linebacker blitz again. Oh, man. Pocket collapses. These two linebackers, Bobby Wagner, KJ Wright, they got it all. Big, fast cover. Second and 25, and here's the longest pass of the game by either side, and it's just out of reach for Josh Bellamy, who caught his first NFL pass last week for 48 yards and a score. And again, the Chicago offense, not only without Jay Cutler, but all Sean Jeffrey, who did not make the trips, watching back in Chicago and he's such a big part yeah. of what they have on the outside normally. Well it's tough. When you got all your receivers it's hard against this defense. I've watched a lot of Seattle Seahawks games. I can't remember the last time I saw buddy, somebody run deep and catch a football against these corners. They do not give up long passes. It's third and 25 and the draw for Tay for only one. As the Bears bring out the punting unit, we hear that German Bushrod is being looked at, going through the concussion protocol, possible concussion. And we saw an injury earlier by Will Sutton, suffered by Will Sutton with the defensive lineman. Possible bicep injury, questionable to return. Seven drives now, seven punts. This one drives back, lock it to the 25 and a good tackle. He's tackled by Jock Rogers. The flag is out after that 61-yard punt. And the flag came in just after 
the tackle. Carl Cheffers. During the kick, holding, receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down, timeout. 13-0 Seahawks, second half opening up with that electrifying 105-yard kick return for a touchdown. Here's what the Seattle offense has produced so far. The Chicago defense having a fine effort. Four sacks, holding them to 146 yards. The one drive right before the half, they covered 77 yards. And again, going the rest of the way without Marshawn Lynch. Aggravating a hamstring and breaking it is Rawls. And the rookie lowers his head and is tackled at the 36. Gain of 21. Yeah, Rawls had a good preseason. Here it comes down in the inside. You can see the guys just chase Jared Allen. Somebody's got to stay outside. They did not. I mean, you're a rookie running back. You fight for every extra yard. That's a good job by Rawls doing that. But, you know, it's, it's something the defense is playing well. They're stopping the run. But if you get too aggressive over pursue, you give up a big run there. That's Rawls. And he's ridden down by McPhee, who's very active out there. Replay every game of the 2015 season on demand with NFL Game Pass. Go to NFL.com slash Game Pass to start your free trial. Well, McPhee, we talked about him earlier just because he is, even John Fox, he didn't even know how to describe him yesterday. We talked to him, he goes, yeah, he's, um, he's really interesting because what do you say? He's big, he could be almost a defensive lineman, but athletic enough to be a linebacker. Second and eight. Slipping out of a tackle, it's Walls. Picks up five, it'll be third and three. What have you seen out of Jimmy Graham blocking? He's caught four balls today for 44. That was always going to be the case. Everybody wanted to talk about it, the blocking. Oh, he lowers his head and just misses McPhee on a run block. So that was not good. But then this, I don't blame him here. I mean, Jimmy Graham, how many times did he stay in and block for Drew Brees? I probably could count him on one hand. So it's going to take a while before he's a good pass protector. Seattle 0 for 7 on third down in this game. Three-man line usually means blitz. Wilson gets it away, and it is on target. The first catch of the game for Doug Baldwin. And a gain of 22. Beautiful job, but when I watch this team, every time they had three down linemen, the Chicago Bears, it means some type of unique blitz. They brought a corner. Oh, and Doug Baldwin, what a nice out and up. There is no way Antrell Rose is specking that. He goes, man, we're blitzing. Russell Wilson's going to have to throw it quick. That was not the case. Good pickup, and they get the big play. And they finally convert for the first time today from the Chicago 35. It's Rawls. He's tackled down at the 31, picks up four. As Derek Coleman mixes it, mixes it up for a moment with Christian Jones. You know, you got Lynch. The next game for Seattle will be against Detroit here next week, but he had the calf injury. Now he has the hamstring today, which you say is all tied to it together. They're going to get a good look, it looks like, in this very game here of what Rawls can do. This team is built around... The premise that they can be tough and run the football. So you got to make Marshawn Lynch, he's still the guy, you got to make sure he's 100% to fulfill that role. Led the league in rushing last year, Seattle did. Leading it here, 13 0 timeout, Seattle. We are back on just a spectacular day here in Seattle. What a shot. The stadium, so beautiful. Second and six. Seahawks are driving. Rawls, he was able to get away from Acho and fight for a yard before Allen Ball. Yeah, but Sam Acho, they brought him in there that time. Good job of staying outside and pushing the run outside so there was not a big gain and the running back couldn't get around the corner. It'll bring up a third and five. Rawls has 33 yards on this drive, but Jackson replaces him for this snap. The long time 
member of the Buffalo Bills. And Wilson, pocket sealed, open is Graham, slips out of a tackle, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. What a great effort by Jimmy Graham. Got away from Brock Vereen. It takes it 30 yards for the touchdown. Such a tough matchup. Russell Wilson stays in the pocket. Nice job of going to the first guy crossing, then finding Jimmy Graham, and you see it's almost impossible to match up against him because he's tall, fast, big. He's got it all. Maybe not the greatest blocker in the NFL, but does it matter when you can catch it and make plays like that? The two big third down conversions on that drive, converting for the first time today. The second one going for the touchdown. We met with Russell Wilson. He said when they first made the trade, he talked a lot, texted a lot with Graham, and Graham said, hey, let me make it very clear. I don't care about my catches. I care about one thing. I want to win. Well, today's next-gen stats are presented by eSurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world. Two touchdowns here in the third quarter. The first on the kick return to open up the second half by Lockett. And then Wilson to Graham, covering 30 yards. And it's 20 to nothing, Seattle. Russell Wilson just hung in there. Finally, some opportunities came to him to make some plays, and he made them. Mariani. And he tumbles out to about the 22. Now, what do you think if you're the Bears? Now, they've been playing very conservatively all day. What do you do now down 20 to nothing? 4.22 to go in the third quarter. I don't know if I change a lot. You know, to think that you're just going to now open it up and start trying to make plays, then this game will be 40 to nothing before you look up. So stay with it. A lot of time to go. After the play was over, unnecessary roughness. Number 83 of the kicking team. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. First down. And that's what happens to everybody when they come here, Jim. They make the mistakes, the penalties, which we saw, which stopped some Bears drives, and then special teams. Uh, and listen, they got it all here. They, re they drafted Tyler Lockett just for that reason. Now, the fact that he's turned into a good receiver, that's a plus, but they're always looking for those unique players. They got lots of them. One of them's a quarterback, and one's a tight end and just caught that touchdown. Best starting point of the day for the Bears. And they take it across the 40 with Forte. Well, kind of interesting on the touchdown catch. They're going to drop back. It's just going to be a three-man rush. They're going to drop back and spy Russell Wilson. They're thinking, we'll get some pressure. He'll break the pocket. We'll make the play. But protection was too good. They didn't make him move. And Jimmy Graham wide open. And a yard short of the first. Again, Cam Chancellor coming back after the long holdout. He was back home in Norfolk, Virginia, working out with a guy who's trained him, Kevin Allen, since he was in high school, watching all the games on television. But the minute he returned, the Seahawks would tell you the energy in the building changed right away. Hey, he's the team captain. He's a physically very gifted player, and he's smart. He can read offenses and help his players out. Third and one, and Forte is stopped short. I think you got to go for it here. It's fourth and one. And John Fox is not. He's going to play the game out. Still plenty of time to go. you got to think the way it's gone that you have a chance to maybe get three or four possessions. And John Fox is walking out in the field to get a good look at this. Hmm. Forte was... Uh, they. We're able to bend him back as he was trying to overpower them and fight off a couple of defenders for the first. 
So they're going to bypass the chances fourth and just inside of the yard. And you might get three more possessions, but I don't know how many times you'll be able to get the ball somewhere close to midfield. But they're going to punt it here for the eighth time. Jim, I agree with the decision. I think I would punt it here and just go ahead and wait and see if your defense can make a play. If you go for it and don't make it, then the game is definitely, well, not definitely, but probably over. Donald. Seahawks were wary of a possible fake, but the punt caught at the 11-yard line. 43 yards it traveled. On our way to Super Bowl 50, looking back at the matchup between Coach Carroll and Coach Fox, Super Bowl 48. The Legion of Boom dominated from the start, the safety on the first play from scrimmage, and the Seahawks never looked back. Had that second half begin with the kick return for the touchdown in that one by Percy Harvin cruising to their first Super Bowl title. And that man in the middle right there is a legend. He refereed three of them. The great Jim Tunney. He flanked there to our left by Garth DeFelice, longtime official. And he did one Super Bowl, back Super Bowl 40, and Joe Ryan from the NFL. But Jim Tunney, he's here as an observer for the officials. First and 10. As Rawls is tackled by McClellan. Saturday is the best game for the best conference with Bama takes on Georgia. The SEC on CBS begins with inside college football and college football today. Alabama, Georgia next Saturday on CBS. Looking forward to that. That will be exciting. Georgia, the offense, what they're doing there. Hey, don't forget the offensive coordinators, uh, Ryan Schottenheimer. Left the St. Louis Rams, went down there, is coordinating that offense. Done a great job so far. There's a second and six carry. And a good burst ahead as Rawls slips out of an ankle tackle. And he's up to the 32-yard line. Thomas Rawls, his confidence is gaining here in the second half. That goes for 18. Yeah, it's gaining his right. Nice job inside. That was the center. Drew Nowak, who gets the block. J.R. Sweezy pulls around from the right guard position. I think we're starting to see a defense that's getting tired. Well, the Seahawks have performed this act many times, grinding out the finish of a game. 54 yards in the quarter for Rolls. Play action fake to him, and Wilson's pass hits Curse to the Chicago side of the field at the 46. Beautiful. Everybody up trying to stop the run. Jermaine Curse coming across the field. Nice sell. Pushes off. Or not pushes off. Just makes that cut. And I've said it before. Look at Russell Wilson. Really an excellent play action quarterback, like I said. And I think, you know, yesterday when we met him, Jim, we were talking. He grabs her hand. You know, you can see why he can control the football. That pass for 22. He says all five passes in this quarter and now he's going to run for first down yardage sliding down at about the 33. this is what you like to see they ran the ball they threw it down the field on play action trying to really go for another big play but well you see that a lot russell wilson nothing there he'll make it happen that's the end of three with the score. Seattle 20, Chicago nothing. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 50. Forte was hurt on that third down attempt. You'll see they bend them back. Right about here. Oh, yes. And that's rough. Mm. Back to the Seahawks now as we start the fourth quarter. Mike Arnold on Sparrow presiding over the crew as Rawls has another six yards. So in the absence of Marshawn Lynch, this undrafted rookie out of Central Michigan now has nine carries for 66 yards. Yeah, he's healthy. He's eager, doing a good job reading the blocks, hasn't been too fast, and 
like I said, I think he caught, even Pete Carroll was saying, a uh, little faith. They have faith in him, and he had a productive, solid preseason for the Seattle Seahawks team. Second and four. Now the pocket collapses, and the pass is tossed out of bounds. Well, they made some changes at running back because they like this kid. They were able to jettison a couple of guys who had been here for a long time, Turbin and Michael. Yeah, you know, there's many reasons why they do that. Just team chemistry, uh, getting Fred Jackson. That's Listen, that was a nice pickup, a smart player. Pete Carroll said he came in here and picked up the offense right away. So when you put him in there, any situation, you know he's not going to make that big mistake to hurt your football team. And he's in there now. Yes, he is, yep. Coach Carroll saying he totally gets it. Learned the offense in like a couple of days. He was a four-time Buffalo Bills captain. Wilson was looking his way now. He's in trouble. And for the second straight play, just has to unload it. That was Tracy Porter blitzing from the secondary. The Chicago Bears defense. Tracy Porter off the inside receiver. Has the speed to keep Russell Wilson from getting outside. Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator, when he was with the Indianapolis coach years ago, he could blitz with the best of them. And this defense, which has had a hard time getting the quarter, to the quarterback, he's not afraid to blitz you to do it. So Hausch get back out for the third time. The field goal business for 45 yards. True again. Three for three. A minute into the final quarter, Seahawks flanking the Bears. Welcome back to Seattle, 23-0 the score. Well, Jimmy Graham is flying high since scoring that touchdown earlier in the game, but he's also flying high in the Seattle skies. He is a certified pilot, and since coming to the Seahawks, he got his seaplane license as well. Graham told me he's currently building his own plane that he plans on flying to and from training camp every day next year. And guys, he also told me traffic during getting to and from the the facility could be up to an hour by car, by flight. Guess what? Just five minutes. Definitely efficient. I hope he's not flying like that to camp. <laughs> that's, that's something. That, Tracy, my partner up here got a little air sick looking oh, at that clip. Man, did I ever. That's not lying. When he turned upside down, I quit looking. And he'll he'll understand when I he'll be the same way when he's my age after playing in the NFL for a long time. But how things have changed, right, Jim? Go to practice in a plane. Impressive. And then no chance of a return. Your weekend starts with Thursday night football when the Steelers will host the Ravens. They met three times last year, including the playoffs. Baltimore will be desperate. Pittsburgh, well, it's going to be, no doubt, the Steelers without Ben Roethlisberger. They're going to MRI him. He got hurt today, and the early reports are they're hoping they might be talking about an injury to his left knee that could cost him only about four games, but that's just an early. Yeah, and then, you know, prognosis. listen, you talk about the Steelers. Everybody thought that this was an offense that could set records this year because of the quarterback and, and all the talent they have outside. Michael Vick. Came in in relief of an injured Roethlisberger today as they eked out a win at St. Louis. Cortez back in. Clawson's going long for Bennett. It was a good pass, but well defended. Sherman was back there, but so too was Earl Thomas. Well, one of the best erasers in the NFL, that's Earl Thomas. As I always say, and you hear me talk about it, he can take a 20-yard play and turn it into five. That's what makes him unique. Probably still the fastest safety back there in the league. It's one of the reasons why Pete Carroll drafted him in the first round. They had a 21-yard completion on the first play of the third quarter, but only three yards. They get five yards now in 11 plays since. As Forte has a couple. Kyle Long jumping up out of that pile, a little ginger. Ginger Lee, I should say. So again, I mentioned earlier, Bushrod 
was being examined for possible concussion, and that has been confirmed. He will not be returning. Their left tackle. They move in Charles Leno to that position. It's third and eight. Austin's pass caught, and then it got up before he was touched. This is going to go all the way out to the 49. Very alertly. Very good, but I must, I bet you Pete Carroll wants to see a replay to see if he's touched as he goes to the ground. Well, did he get up? Was that left knee up before right touched him? Oh, he's down. Yeah, I think you're right. No question about it. Here comes the flag. Seattle is challenging the ruling on the field that the runner was not down prior to where we spotted the ball. We'll review the play. And remember, if that's going to be the case, overrule, they'd be facing fourth down. down by contact at the 28-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Seattle will not be charged with a timeout. Seahawks win the challenge. Wright did, in fact. Touch Bennett, but he still had a knee down. Yep. Elbows down, knees down, everything. So good call. Good job by K.J. Wright. Being alert, knowing he has to touch the receiver down. Biggest kick of the